Welcome to the second episode of Film Decoded. In this episode, we have Barmi Dharan, who runs the design studio of Padakasset, and they're primarily into making film posters. For each film, there are different campaigns that movies run at different stages, from the announcement of the shoot beginning, to the teasers and trailers, theatrical releases, and finally the OTT release. Padakasset has been involved with multiple films at different stages of their campaigns. Barmi had worked on interesting films like Skylab, Ashokavanam, Dhamki, Panchatantram, Tamanna's November Story, Tunivu, Doctor, Minnal Murali, Beast, and his most recent work includes Guns and Gulabs and Nani's High Runner. He also works with Netflix and Prime for some of their campaigns. The reason why I wanted him on the podcast was as an audience, when I first saw his posters, it was like a fresh breeze compared to the status quo. As a designer, I could appreciate them even more. And most importantly, he has worked with extremely sensible filmmakers. So I really, really wanted to talk to him. When I reached out to him for the podcast, he had only one ask that we do this in black and white. Apart from his films, his studio regularly publishes some stunning fan art of all the characters in the film that they like, which actually put them on the map and brought them opportunities. In this episode, we're going to talk to Barani about how his design journey started, how feature film opportunities started coming in, what his usual process is like, the timelines involved, the tools he uses, the budgets, the filmmakers he worked with, and he's also been kind enough to screen share and show the iterations involved in the making of a poster. So let's decode his process. Hey, Barney, thanks for making your time to come to the show. Nice to have you here. Happy to be here, yeah. So let's jump in. I want to know how it all started when you picked up design before coming into film posters and what has your journey been until like starting to work with a feature film? Yeah, so when I was in college, right? So design was like a kind of an escape to me from my study. I shouldn't say this, sorry, but never really got into the engineering stuff, right? So... To kind of escape that, I got into this design designing, like family, random design, pick, whatever I feel like it, I do it. Then it kind of got very serious. We were started doing magazines for our college and stuff like that. And yeah, it kind of triggered something into me, I have to say. From an engage, I was like really fascinated about from like about this visual medium, like this, something that you can like convey your emotion through a picture, right? I was not, not very good at illustration. So I thought, okay, poster designing is something that I can achieve with my skill set which I have. So after the final year, uh, Corona happened. I was like 2020, I think. But when my final year ended, Corona happened. So at the time, I didn't have anything good to do. Right? Uh, there was obvious pressure of like, uh, you know, to find a job there. But I thought, okay, uh, I'm at land a job in design. So I started sending resumes. In, that mean, in the meantime, I was Every day we used to call and have a conversation with a group call or whatever during Corona, right? So then this idea came like, okay, what about, what if we start an Instagram page? Like we, we were like clean books, right? We wanted to do short films, like usual engineering student stuff. Uh, so then we wanted to create an Instagram page. Like, okay, let's do some watch a film and post a review or something like that. Uh, then I thought, okay, let's not do something like that. Do it, let's do it uh, based on design because I'm heavy on design, so I don't want to. I I don't like to watch that much of movies. So I told them, okay, I'll design the poster. You watch a movie and you write a review. I'll design the poster like an alternate poster for it, a brand new poster for whatever movie you want. So it turned to something into it kind of bounced off, and when at the end it kind of got into this idea of okay, let's do this reimagined retro posters. Like, what if this person acted in this movie? It's like a time travel machine. Like, what if this guy was back in that time doing this movie with this particular director? So it was something like this. The idea really kind of interested me. And when we kind of started discussing what our name could be, uh, the name we ended was Parakasit. Parakasit is, a, I don't know, we kind of call it in Tamil. What, is, what does it mean is, it's a VCD cassette. Like, uh, we used to, Watch films and pirate a movie. Everybody used to watch it like that. So we thought, okay, let's give. Uh, we are because uh, my family is not a traditional theatre going family. So when a movie comes out, it will take at least like 10 or, 10 or 20, 30 days to kind of, you know, for us to see a movie. That too, in a case that my father gets, gets, gets it. So we rarely go to theatre. 
only picture I can film or only it's a very very kind of the movie that we have to watch in a theater. So my uh, experience with movies are what I watched in TV set. That is the TV home theater system we we had. So yeah, that kind of wanted uh, me to kind of made me to name name my page into this. but i can't say during this process what were some of the projects that you could say gained a lot of traction so when did things start picking up in the direction of what you are right now uh, we did a poster of uh, vikram's movie ram after that what happened was you know the followers started coming in the main major breakthrough was a uh, nayakan poster so there is a godfather poster my one of my favorite posters there will be this, this block of text in the middle and there'll be credits in the box very beautifully designed the box so again there is lot of parallel between this nayakan and godfather which is very obvious right so i thought of okay what if we kind of treat the nayakan movie the same way they treated night right? sorry godfather right so i designed that poster and got it it got a lot of traction but the main breakthrough was through the movie the comic cover we did for jagame uh, tandey that was so actually tomorrow is the movie uh, we kind of posted it the day before the movie is going to streaming for netflix so we kind of posted it mentioned netflix and everything we kind of uh, kind of posted our uh, posted on their story uh, that's the only story they had so we kind of got a lot of traction and attention and after that the sura report will come cover and uh, yeah after that kind of the traction grew so the by the order of things like you know um, first um, there is this film director called bijanambia so he contacted us through uh, instagram and he gave us our first project taish unfortunately we don't have any files of it right now with it was uh, yeah again there was a viral attack i told you after that parallelly to the number story came and after that i didn't have a project for like a month couple of months back. and then uh, skyla came Kaila was a special project for me because after that, you know, it got better. So Kaila producer, uh, so he kind of reached out to me saying uh, they had a they had already a designer called Vin Sirat. It's like a very big name in designing, right? So they wanted to do they wanted us to do these additional campaign because uh, he kind of we, they had some like uh, any issue something like that. So he also gave us. Gave them the five main PR, so they wanted us to do additional posters to kind of support the movie through the campaign. So we did that. After that, this was the one I'm looking. Then after that, they got. That's great to know, man. So Barney, uh, I want to talk about the process of your work here. So before I get into that, one quick question: What are the tools that you use? Okay, so I use Photoshop primarily. Uh, I don't know how to work on Illustrator because might usually. For my posters, the typo design will be done on majorly Photoshop. If it, if it requires translation, it will be done by my teammate. Right? Uh, yeah, primarily that's the only software I use. And uh, yeah, for file sharing, I use this either WeTransfer or SendGD regarding the size of the file. And actually, uh, yeah, if you do, if you want to go beyond for your composition, right? So then we'll go for three D render for the background and settings and stuff like that. So for that we have, uh, you know, I either contact a freelancer or, you know, I reach out to a freelancer or something like that. So majorly everything happens on Photoshop. Whatever the illustration, whatever stuff you see, it happens on Photoshop for me. Got it, got it. So now coming to the process, I just want to understand a brief step-by-step process of like from the incoming uh, inbound request. Hey, Arani, are you available for this poster? To finally handing it off. what are the major uh, steps that are involved here i also want to know what inputs do you specifically take from the people that you're working with what assets that you take and also where do you finalize your pricing uh, how do you set the structure etc if you could walk us through that got it okay so okay for director or producer approaches me they be like uh, yeah narrating me this i was fortunate enough to listen to great many beautiful stories but that turned out to be a problem for me because i kind of went into the places where the story is not in right so i'll fix it on an idea sometimes it will be important for the story but sometimes it won't be so after that even i listen to the story for the more 
But after that, I ask them, what do you want the movie to represent? Right? Uh, what do you, how the, how do you want people to see your movie? Something like that. I ask for keywords. I ask for characters. Or something which kind of makes the film stand alone from the rest of the campaign. So that's the main thing I ask. Uh, coming to the resources, uh, uh, usually when they come to me, they haven't like done for sure. They would have done look test, but but that I think that is something we can't use in the post. Uh, so majorly, I I have to work with the screen grab uh, from the sets, like whatever they are shooting, um, and pretty much that's it. Like after the campaign to the point, uh, we can do we'll do photo shoot like based on the ideas that we sketch and give and uh, based on the requirement they have, like how they want the film to be seen again. So. I kind of attended like two to three photo shoots in the entire campaign and that. All the other rest I've worked with is screen time. Or uh, again, like I'm situated in Chennai, so most of the things happen in either part. So what happens is they will do a photo shoot. Uh, either I'll give them ideas, like this is a, this is we can do. Or they will have their own idea, they do the photo shoot and And I'll have to improve. When it comes to pricing, again, I'm not very good at it. Uh, usually, I'd go with whatever the budget the production house can do, so that I can work with ranging wide range of uh, film, so that like I don't stick to that. This is the only budget I work, I work with, so that way I can get like music videos, short films, and films in like various ways. Pricing wise, okay. So how the pricing method goes is when I give them give them an invoice, they drop an advance, and as the project goes on, very important then uh, they'll just you know give me like uh, a percentage of uh, you know what the, the budget so within the end or after the end of the movie, it, get, it will get something so I have no issue with I, luckily I had no issue with like a payment uh, as a drop or something like that no oh, for okay. me everything has, has been good and usually at what point of the film's process are you involved how does it vary with the film I have been like involved in in all the projects, my involvement has been like very different way. Uh, for number story, I brought in like very much later. For Taish, I actually for Taish, Taish was like really cool today because what happened was when uh, when Mr. Bijan Ambio messaged me, texted me saying that we need poster. I said when? He said tomorrow. Uh, so what happened was okay. I I called him immediately. He sent me the dump of images, all everything. We go. Uh, I pull an all nighter that day. Uh, so at 10, I started my work by like 5 or 7 a.m. I gave him like a dump of like 10 to 50 posters because the, he gave me a clear direction. So this is what I want. I, I don't want this. I don't want that. So first, I confirmed like, okay, the typo, the typo was said. Then all the other kind of follow this. So I just pattern design like literally everything. Right. So at later that day, he told me these are the ones I want marked and we started kind of developing that. Yeah, it went something like that. But that's what I told you, right? When I listen to brief, I tend to get in get fixed into the idea which is not necessary to the film. So that's what one big example to that. Uh, so right now, like after two years, like one year of time, I think we again did some posters. I personally did that, like uh, Bijou didn't ask me for that, but, but I did that for my own, you know. Like I thought, okay, I could have done this better that time. So let's do it properly this time. So I did that. They've done like two to three courses or something like that. So that is, I was like at the very last moment. And Ashtar uh, Kwanamlo, before me, the, there was already some person involved. He did like a few posters, Amazon and stuff like that. I was brought in later. Kyla, it was like very late. Uh, already there was like stuff being done. And I was got to kind of, you know, do some other, you know, like type to design and additional campaign and stuff like that. So Dumkey, Dumkey is the first project that I think I was brought in like at the beginning of seeing the first project like that. And uh, yeah. actually what happened was uh, for Asha Kwanamla, I think uh, Vishwa texted me in Instagram before, like saying, you know, I like your work. Uh, would you like to be a part of a film something like that? Then I was contacted by these people as well. So yeah, it was like a proper coincidence because I think these people got my contact from Kailas people, like the producer or something. 
it was properly coincided and yeah it followed in dumpy action so it's like literally trust me for the design so he said like do a thing there'll be like very little uh directions that would come from it he was very happy and see he is very happy with our project so yeah it, it went really good and uh, before we jump into your work uh, where we uh, get to see the visuals and talk about uh, the exact process for it i just want to know your team structure like how it evolved how do you split responsibilities right now okay okay you come with a project to me with uh, requesting an illustration right so if it heavily involves illustration i go with my my brother right his name is dinakar rao not literally my brother but he's like a brother to me so uh he does all the illustrations for me he's like a he's the most talented artist i've ever seen right so he can work on both physical medium as well as digital medium. like he's like literally insanely talented and also i think whatever i imagine with a proper description i gave him he literally like kind of brings that image in mind never even one Singular time, I kind of thought like, okay, this is not I want, not what I wanted, something like that. So he's like amazingly talented. And for typography, I'm recently collaborating with this person, Vida. So he's like, uh, I have an idea. I give him an English text. Okay, this is how we want typography. He'll be like, ah, fitting it into design. So yeah, it'd be great. I would not properly call this a team, um, but you know, there are freelancers, but we kind of work with special connections. So. So that's why I'm calling it a team or something like that. When I quote a budget, I would also keep these people in my mind as well. So because I'd ask them, do you want an illustration, illustrated poster in the campaign? If they say yes, then I'd go like, okay, this is the project. I think proper budget that we have to go because I'd be involved in these people. Yeah. And when it comes to the page for the guest, right? The the page, Instagram page, I have this person called Varun. when you see the post you, you can see the caption which is like sometimes more you know more at what you call it uh, more beautiful than the post that we create so those are written by this person called varun is uh, i haven't like literally seen him yet. we have been like working together for like 2 to 3 years literally i haven't seen him. i do i don't even know how he kind of looks like right so we just i tell him okay uh, because all it started was i was started doing posts I was just literally randomly posting them, but I thought okay, it needed a meaning. But I wasn't like able to articulate it properly through writing. So I thought maybe someone better uh, will be there to kind of do it properly. So I put out a Instagram story saying, okay, is there any is there any writers if want to collaborate? Just you know, feel free to DM. So he DM me. He did some test writings. I wouldn't call them test writing because uh, I gave him a poster. He was he literally kind of gave him a gave me a paragraph to do. So yeah, I was. Always, do it. I give them a piece of work. We just write the caption, which is like more beautiful than it. So, uh, yeah, that is an amazing talent that I have never seen. So, I was very fortunate to work with these sort of talented people because, um, uh, working with them makes me reach, look real good. Because I feel like I'm very inferior to them in terms of in terms of talent. Because, uh, see, uh, for me to make a poster, I need all this stuff, right? But they can conjure out of conjure a really beautiful piece of work without anything. So yeah, so these are the teammates I work with, and uh, I collaborated with a lot of people actually. Uh, there is a person called Sambhat. Uh, so he's a 3D person, a 3D artist, works on Blender. So I kind of uh, we work with uh, we kind of collaborated for this uh, a movie called Nokta. So uh, the the poster hasn't released yet. So once it releases, I can show you. Yeah, yeah, he's also in Pune, Tamil. Yeah, so this is the uh, team I work with. So I think this is the right point to dive into the budget aspect as well. So for the listeners, mm-hmm. and for me, even I am curious. I just want to know, okay. uh, in the entire structure of a film, when they are budgeting, how much do they usually uh, allot for film posters, campaigns as a whole, and uh, okay. how does it differ from movie to movie? All right. Okay, let's take two examples. Right? So one is a low budget movie. So I'm not saying every low budget movie is like that. In most cases I've seen, they won't even allot a budget for a poster. So if the movie budget is three crores, so I go and ask them like seven lakh for the poster campaign. Oh no, that is not going to happen. So I get to work with what they got. See, okay, so an average IT employee earns a particular amount for a month, right? But 
even in that low budget movie what i can get is more than i can you know live on the comfortably i can like give my give to give it to my parents and with the rest i can like have a really good what do you call it a month i can like properly spend it in a month right so budget never concerns me at all only if there are like lot of projects okay so if okay if nanish project is here i got to give priority to his project because not like is most important but because of the commitment i got it is huge liability right so they were probably hand over like say for example i don't want to reveal the budget but say for example five or six um then for this movie they give me like 50000 for the entire entire gang my mind would automatically go to let's work for the big budget but what i have to how we have to plan accordingly is to kind of you know satisfy both of these people because again everything is hard work right and so how it, this is how it goes for netflix we have a very good we have a proper understanding so i can discuss about it but yeah it is a very comfortable budget that we work with for each and every creative we collaborate with they are pretty much that and uh, for short films they would give me like 2000 so we have to give me like three four six four six or five four six again it is very uh, strictly based on the time i got i have no problem to work on low budget projects but again it's only the time consumes like see i missed lot of it i'm not very proud of it right because again i go because of the need of to do something different to kind of stand up because i'm a very small time defender also so i tend to i tend to get you know utilize every op- i i have to utilize every opportunity i get right so it really comes down to the time my god so it is nothing to do with the budget of the project so whatever budget is this my work, my work is going to be the same okay so then this uh, collaboration part comes in. okay if a person comes to the pk budget and wants an illustration literally like it is not possible. if i could illustrate i would do it happily but my illustration skills are very horrible so i have to go to dinaka uh, so he is a very busy illustrator so he worked on mavir and he works concept art he works with gaming studios he literally works with everybody who wants illustration right so i can't go with him to ask him to do a free illustration for this software so that's not it's going to work again for instagram our page is different so how we will work is whenever anybody gets a free time they work on an artwork and we'll post it so that's how it goes so uh yeah pretty much that is so that's how the budgeting is done so again uh i usually doesn't stress too much on the budget so if they give me like this is what we got i will be happy to us they like, cannot you know, accept it got it got it thanks thanks for that insight so uh, in this one thing so netflix and these otts usually have a per poster kind of a deal is it yeah yeah actually uh, usually they have you know designer so they want a special uh, illustrated posters okay if the movie is uh, releasing tomorrow so they want to garner some attention they tend to go with some conceptual posters kind of you know since the you know bring the audience okay, reminding them okay this movie is releasing tomorrow okay so we work for tunivers uh, uh they they want to release uh, before the movie release so that like it kind of the bus will be there on the section so we did for tuniver beast a uh, doctor we did and the minimal movie we did minimal movie is a special thing because they had a only one comic idea but we pro- proposed them let's do a, a journey of the hero sort of like an arc five issues uh, mini series or something like that they really like the idea we we'll show them rough sketches and they really like it and yeah we proceed with and publish it so that's how it went so usually they come to us like with a single portion in mind so if if you know if the material requires a multiple that we feel we can tell the story better than that like you know one poster then we'll tell them like okay you can go with five posters which will which will be like really beautiful to kind of look at so this is the comic movie as well for the superhero movie as well so we can do something like this they yeah, are and yeah awesome then let's actually get started with discussing about minal murli's uh, concept and character arc while looking at the posters itself i think it's a good segue to get into it so let's get into the exact comic series uh, that bharani was talking about uh, which he worked with netflix as a campaign so uh, bharani can you walk us through what idea they came with uh, how the Uh, output i mean the deliverables how they evolved with the inputs that you gave and uh, what mm-hmm. kind of character arc did you try to show the audience through this series all right, all right. so 
again a usual superhero arc that that's what we had in our when we were discussing internally with me and varun okay. so what happened was uh, okay let's take to zero let's introduce him with a band uh, something very eye catchy then let's have him learn things and go through a struggle and uh, let let him fight back and stand up like with an iconic so in the last cover we used to pose the used to for the kia so which is something like you know a super heroic pose so um the first poster is uh, the inciting incident where he gets the power from from the lightning attack he gets his like the super power right so the first iteration we sent was like not uh, not that good uh, they sent us a screenshot like you know how they want it like an, an idea or rough or something like that so when i showed it to the illustrator he was like you know he gave me some ideas but everything went good but we couldn't like get the accurate taste of uh, tobino so we went on kind of trying like different. actually the first cover is the one which took a lot of time so after that we kind of you know get got everything in there. actually everything uh, i think the third poster is also from the poster actually so we wanted to kind of keep that relatability so that like it, would, it didn't look too alien from the campaign they were doing so to kind of you know keep them everything uh, everything kind of you know bundled together also the for the last cover we thought of having uh, you know uh, something more chaotic or something more uh, what you call it more crowded he is standing amongst the crowd or crowd or something like that like a savior or something like that. we wanted to keep that recall value of the posters we created they went there. so i think yeah that's pretty much the idea like i previously explained we are in a hack we kind of stick to uh, stuck to it so yeah, everything kind of uh, uh, fit, uh, like you know fell into place awesome awesome so for this project what was the timeline like we had a month actually okay, okay. we had a month actually uh, actually that was a very good uh, time period that we can give to illustrator for to fight five comic hours so that is this is very huge actually so we had a month of time one week went to ideas and iteration and discussion lot of discussion and stuff and after that after that week uh, we went to do rough sketches and color palettes and stuff and after that yeah initial sketching begins and everything was approved only the not uh, only the first one was you know bending and at the last moment we got this idea of uh, him like you know bursting out of uh, uh, a space and surrounded by my uh, what do you call it energy burst and lightning bolts stuff like that it really got their attention and it really kind of you know uh, put everything in because the first cover is the most important thing um So yeah, it it made everything fill into the uh, fit to fit the person properly. So yeah, that kind of process went in. It is actually very rare to see Indian posters of this quality and with a direction and taste. So thanks for uh, making such stuff. Yeah, actually, a Netflix team also involved in this. They also they gave the copy words for the posters, the the comic strips you see, uh, the way of the the letter C. the word that you see in the poster they kind of gave us uh, what to use and what not to go with but okay. they have been a real help actually actually without uh, their proper direction we could have landed on something else which might have been good or not but their direction helps us in this like really got into that uh, really get into that uh, what you call it a uh, proper campaign just to get into the details of how things work who mm-hmm. uh, is the point of contact from netflix that you will be interacting with actually there was this person called ashok bhati uh, okay. so he is like i don't know what his position in the team is but he kind of took care of the social media of netflix india south okay okay so actually he, he was the one who kind of contacted us and uh, as, actually uh, we collaborated on doctor before okay. um, there is a movie called doctor they released it in uh, netflix hmm. and before premiering they wanted us to do a special uh, a uh, illustrated poster called the doctor digest you know reader uh, digest right yes. yeah something like that we did doctor digest so okay. we did that and uh, after while doing it i kind of asked them because i knew minimal money was coming and i asked them see we are doing an illustrated po- movie poster for doctor but there is a superhero film called minimal money is there any chance that we can collaborate collaborate on that as well he said yeah we were also thinking about that i wanted to ask you about that as well Are you open to it? I said, brother, uh, the love of God, please bring that to me. We'll do something really 
so that's how it uh, started and he is like you know properly guiding and navigating us through the process yeah without him again like i told you it would have been like this uh, quality that we had uh, in the duration of that one month how often mm-hmm. would you sync with the netflix team uh, to understand if the direction is right is there like a fixed frequency or it happens like ad hoc no 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 it was like i would drop them voice notes and what up okay so they, they he would they thought any bunny what the status i if we if we had something going i would send them that or else i just you know text him or drop a voice note saying this is like it's kind of having some we are kind of having some trouble ideating or something like that he would understand and yeah uh, at the end of the time actually at properly the day before release i kind of had to travel from town and head back i had to put this thing together so that's when kind of this uh, a little stress kind of built up but yeah we kind of uh, properly kind of rectified it as well so yeah uh, i didn't face any kind of uh, what do you call it uh, deadline issue or whatever in that thing because we had everything properly kind of planned out yeah. so i want to jump into the second film posters that i want to know more from you which is <laughs> my favorite from your overall work ashokonam lo arjun kalyanam so uh, just to the listeners like these mm-hmm. are the posters which really caught my eye as an audience and i was like how are these so fresh oh, like who's the designer behind it that was my curiosity and i reached out to the director of ashokonam uh, ramkiran kola and uh, that's how i got the contact of uh, barney as well so i really want to uh, understand the process of making these posters how you concluded on the aesthetic and overall how the project came into picture who you worked with just uh, if you can walk us through that uh, story yeah so ashokonam no happened in like a year ago i guess so i think uh, during january uh, nani i think one of the members of the co direction team called reach out to me and said uh, hey we are making this film um are you do you have time to hear our narration so i thought that we have one line or something like that so we got on a zoom call and we kind of literally explained the entire story in by scene i really fell in love with it and this is the first time i'm um getting a project where i can like do a lot right so i really wanted to kind of you know uh, impress him with my work so what happened was after the call he gave me the the first post right it for the most the song for sure oh ada pilla so that's the first post right there so when i was working on it i kind of gave them lot of iteration and they now they didn't like any of it then what i thought was okay let jump on a zoom call and share my screen you kind of guide me through it because they were very particular about the kind of photo they want so we went on i was doing a lot it nothing was you know clicking for them after that i i, I hit like out of like you know in a in a process i hit all of all the other layers there was only this blue layer beneath and entirely the poster became a minimal poster with just the characters in the foreground and the blue background and they were like okay stop it stop it we are there we are there. so after that we picked on we added this uh, light effects and stuff like that retouching and all the other thing i mean credit placement on all the other stuff so once we resolved everything we had this poster. so this was yeah. the first poster uh that yeah, yeah, yeah. first poster right yeah this is after that there is yeah yeah we really like that leaves actually okay. we wanted it everywhere <laughs> okay. yeah something like glowing or something something to keep uh, you know uh, something to you know have something movement or something in the poster right something like so, that so uh, for this movie in particular uh, the makers of this movie their initial film raja varu rani garu like that mm-hmm. they were very uh, they prioritized aesthetics a lot that was one of their main selling points and why the movie worked so well as well so yeah. with people who uh, give a lot of importance to those little details what were the kind of inputs you got initially uh, so yeah. what are the keywords that they stressed upon okay so the main thing is uh, you know for the song name or up i used a very classy mm-hmm. right uh, the director ravi said no i didn't understand like why he was saying no this is this looks really beautiful he said 
when you see it at the first glance you can read it properly mm. so you was valuing functionality or form okay so you wanted functionality to be there but that functionality to be uh, has to be in the aesthetic for the club mm. right so that is the that is like a very new thing for me right mm. so either it is form or either it is functionality but for them it is functionality within the aesthetics of the club mm. and one more thing they wanted to you know prioritize was the not to go too flimsy like not to go too retail like you know there are a lot of portions where you can see the actors plays are very bad and they they are like literally listening or glimmering right so they didn't want that they want to keep a minimal retouching very little color correction and they literally want to they didn't want to go out of the aesthetic they they wanted it very minimal uh only the milestone milestone post i think one year of after one of the ideas so they they let me free actually so they didn't have any uh what do you call it uh, direction for me so that's the only person you can see which is kind of outside the uh campaign it is literally stand out so yeah something like that they were very conscious and very uh, precise about the things they want and i was very happy to kind of uh, work with the team like that actually building years and i opened up so let's move to the next movie which is the most recent movie for you hi nana nani's 30 movie can you talk about yeah. how this project came about again what are the inputs what are the variations and if you could show us some earlier iterations by sharing your screen for this that will be really helpful as well okay so actually it was it was it is in the it was in the afternoon uh i think it was right so he called me and was talking about like what do you do what project is it something like that and i have to, like at the end of the call he said at our director will call you i didn't know what that was after that after the director called me when he was explaining it i thought uh, then i realized okay it's a nani film so i was like literally okay this is like an important moment of my life here. so let me just pause and I was really having a good time so after that we connected and uh, he showed me the initial actually they kind of went through a lot of design and actually so he showed me what has been done before and what is not working for him and he was very clear about it for me like he was very clear what he wanted first we set out to make the title make, make the title design well let me just show you okay yeah the first uh, piece they gave me was this screenshot from the glim right okay so i really like this way uh, 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 more than the photoshop images they did so my idea was to actually his words were like the world he was creating was this very easy and very fresh world that you know that is like very new and different so i wanted to give a lot of negative space in the post so that like it looks very uh, it, it stands out from the rest of it. and i really like negative spaces in the post so i gave him this but he liked it but the main problem he had was the faces are not visible for the image was like that so he said let's use this image for something else and uh, we went uh, we kind of picked this image actually like they were standing uh, in front of a wall so this was my idea and i wanted to explore this possibility of using the water color in a mainstream movie which has been like which has been done before but in a very different way i wanted to try it so i showed him this he really liked it and the team at also liked it actually and uh, we developed it into this uh something like this after that it turned to something like uh, this yeah and i think this is the final output you see in the uh, what do you call it in the in the official version actually we wanted actually you can see the walls here the wall has been like carried out to the white space but before that it wasn't like that it was like uh, this so there was like only the empty space the okay. wall you can see will be only in the paint texture right but again they wanted some you know uh, some contrast between the characters and the background so they wanted uh, something to try that so we went with that and nani's shirt color also changed uh, to bring him into yeah. yeah 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 it was previously it was white his shirt color was uh, what what was the problem was everything was looking similar Hmm. there wasn't like a differentiation between what uh, what the characters and what the background is 
So we turned the shirt into blue. Uh, yeah, before his shirt was something like this. He was like entirely cloth in white. So we we turned his shirt into blue so that like he can like stand out of it. And uh, and I think one design question here is this like uh, mm-hmm. just you use the pen tool and change the hues uh, for that exact uh, part of the shirt. No, actually, this is white color. Actually, you can't change like that. So there are like a lot of curves, adjustment, and a lot of other stuff involved. So okay. you can like, yeah, it is like the tutorial is easily available on YouTube. Actually, white is like very white and blacks are very hard to change the color. So right. there are like a lot of layers about the like curves and uh, blending modes and yeah, a lot of stuff there. But yeah, we kind of I thought that is not possible. But director went to Nani and said, uh, but Nani. Said, we have high resolution image. It is possible. Ask him to try it. So then I couldn't say no. So I tried it. Yeah, we had a like really good option. And for typo exploration, they were very, the director was very particular in what kind of typo he wanted. So so these are these are the uh, typos we tried for. Um, I really liked this one, but again, it felt very corporate, very what you call it, a jewelry shop ish. You know, something like that. So we went. Uh, so we finally landed on. Uh, wait a second. Yeah, we finally landed on this. Right, right. So he, actually, what happened was he was precise, precise. The director was precise to the point where the high should start in a point and he, the high should end in a point. So he was very precise about it, and he gave me the freedom to kind of use like whatever fonts I chose for uh, the credits. He was okay with it. Again, this was done in a very short period of time. I really like this poster very, uh, very much, but it could have been better. But he, uh, the poster should be followed, right? The rest of the campaign will be really good. Trust me. Awesome, awesome. And uh, again, there is this announcement poster we did. Uh, for the announcement, uh, we had many iterations. I don't have it, have it with me right now, but. We had this idea of uh, dropping a hint of what the title could be. Mm-hmm. So behind it, the shapes are not there for different attraction. It is just the title warped into the space like that. Right. So the idea was we'll announce it with that. And after the first look, everything released, we kind of uh, release the same poster with the uh, enlarged version. So this one was like, yeah. So this is the exact same poster. Nice, nice. So, yeah. This is such a, I mean, it's rare that we see a star hero's poster with him in such a small size and uh, yeah. the back literally plain just with the uh, title. Uh, this is... Yeah, again, I, sh- I should thank the makers for this. They are like very, very open to the ideas like that I give them and they are very appreciative and very, uh, what do you call it, supportive. So I kind of, I had like, lot of freedom in this uh, campaign actually and yeah i can't wait to kind of bring more because the ideas we have are very exciting and very fresh that i can say our main inspiration for the campaign is being drawn from korean movie posters that they kind of use negative negative pain to tell a story to tell to to kind of invoke some feeling to the to the viewer so that we wanted to do with our campaign so that's the main idea so yeah Mani was like very uh, supportive and the director was very supportive and everyone was very supportive. I didn't have the feeling of, okay, I was working on a, uh, the pressure is there, I obviously to kind of turn it to the fans, but I had, I felt vi- little to no pressure before the release. Only at the time of release, I was fidgeting, I was like very panicking, but after the release, uh, again, Mani and the director called me uh, to kind of, you know, texture me to kind of, you know, saying that, Really, really like your work and looking forward to see the see the entire campaign. Yeah, that was very positive. So nice to hear all of that. Uh, could you walk us through how Dhamki happened? Again, the kind of inputs. Uh, did you get to listen to the script? What script elements did you try to include in the posters? Okay. So what happened was for, for Dhamki, uh, the you know uh, the one who coordinated everything his name is Chanti he kind of called me and narrated the story and after that uh, Vishwa kind of gave me some elements he wanted to uh, to be carried out in te- throughout the entire campaign 
so obviously we wanted to go with gold but we wanted to do something different what we wanted was let's not have him stand surrounded by gold bars stuff like that usually it is shown in that way only so for dumki title uh, and everything we wanted to use this effect of money and this glamour of gold stuff like that right so that's how we arrived to this typography and uh, which work was particular about the type of font he wanted he wanted this slab serif font a very bulky and very kind of energetic font so we used that and for release date and ua uh, ratings i used a background it's called a uh, brioche element i think so that is usually seen in uh, what you call it money the intricate pattern of a uh, uh, element so that that usually is in money bank notes and stuff like that so we used that for uh, we used it actually it was an experimental design i showed it to him he really liked it yeah we kept it in the post nice uh, so this was the initial set of uh, visuals that you uh, showed to the team yeah yeah yeah, yeah perfect okay and uh, uh, since you are in chennai and usually the teams that you work with are in hyderabad all of this happens through screen share uh, and all like these review kind of meetings yeah mostly and even for i think for vishwak uh, we don't uh, actually we i haven't like sit on a meet with them so it just that he will drop a voice note or he will be sending me a text message saying this is what i need something like that i will send him through images through whatsapp or telegram uh, depending on the size and he looks at it if he likes it he will say like okay we'll let's go with it or if he wants some mistakes or some corrections there he will let me know and i'll work on it and yeah something like that it's, it's very kind of i shouldn't say this but it was very casual to work with this like we really like down to earth and it's like whatever ideas i'll give him if it works for the film he will he will go with it okay well, how radical it may be it will, he will go with it but if it's not working for the movie he tell me he'll he'll tell me like this is not uh, what do you call it 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 does not fit to the aesthetic of the film so i just drop the idea so something like that it is very casual with it so for the typefaces involved here was the typeface already given or did you have to hunt for this particular typeface uh, or and was it used just for the title or anywhere else in the posters okay so for the title font uh, again vishwak wanted a very specific font uh, type so it was a slab serif font so i could find uh, i could like i went to like a lot of slab serifs and i found this one is like more uh, this one is more standing out and uh, has some personality to it and one thing is you, you don't use a font which is used in the title in the campaign it okay. kind of undermines the power the title has you know if you use the title font in everywhere the title lo- loses its uniqueness in the in the campaign so that one i was very conscious of so this is the only place the font is used only in the title and for the Uh, for the subsidiary fonts, the fonts I used for credits and everything, it was like my choice only, and luckily it went very well with the kind of uh, typography we went with. So everyone was happy with that. Got it. No complaints. Is it usually a challenge to find the Telugu uh, ones for the fonts? Like, how do you go about that? No, actually, Telugu in in fonts case, English has English is the only language which has like n number of font uh, options. right for telugu we had to literally uh, do it on our own for example in this one it was done by a person called shri varshan again one of my long time collaborators so what we did was we did the english one first and i sent it to him so this was actually we de- developed like a uh, tamil telugu hindi malayalam kannada for every indian language right so we went for like uh, he created everything in illustrator using vector so yeah for uh, regional languages Uh, for non English English languages, we have to do it by hand. We don't have funds for that. There are funds, but no, they are they are not useful for this kind of uh, title to be done something like that. Right, right. That's that's a huge uh, challenge over there with respect to typeface. Yes. Yeah. yeah, and the main challenge, one of the main challenges I face is because I don't know how to read and write Telugu, uh, unfortunately. So I have to give them like various versions of it uh, to the director or the one who's like uh, what do you call it taking charge of uh, charge of poster. So I have to give them like a lot of versions to kind of okay, is the readability is okay, is the letters are properly uh, represented or something like that. 
So it would take about like five to six iteration to get it right. That's the only thing we are facing challenge right now, the, the other language type of program. But again, uh, at the end of the day, we cannot get everything done. Yeah. Got so it. that's Got the it. process. Got it. So coming to the um, posters with uh, the actor in it, like how did mm-hmm. these uh, come to life? What was the thought process and concepts involved behind these posters? Okay, so first, the uh, one with the gold background. Uh, actually, Vishwak never told me we, he'll be like releasing this as the uh, first look, right? Uh, he gave me the poster. Uh, the the one who's like coordinating said me we have to do something ASAP. Uh, so I got down and did many iterations where he's like surrounded by money, uh, surrounded by gold bars. And he's like he's like standing amidst of flattering money. But I felt it is always uh, there was something always done in that uh, direction or done done in that aesthetic. So I wanted to do something different, minimal, but something very what you call it uh, something very what you call it uh, something very standing out, which which will stand out among all the posters. So I had this idea of him standing behind a what you call it a gold uh, backdrop. Initially, it was a what you call it a a palace, something like that. But in this post, in this image I got, he was like leaning or something, like you know, supported by a wall or something. I thought, okay, what if it is a gold wall, gold wall or something? So we made this. It was actually a stained glass from a church chapel. Okay. 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 So we kind of made it into a gold material and added the money texture and everything. Actually, we wanted to match the color of uh, the wall with the watch he was wearing. The particular, I think. So yeah, it's a very high premium watch. So we kind of match it. Wanted to match that with the backdrop, and we kind of, yeah, I, I say we kind of pretty much came. So. Yeah, this is interesting. So there is uh, the texture of money here overall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a conscious decision actually. Yeah, uh, if you kind of uh, see over him, he was kind. Of, he'll be kind of integrated into the money uh, texture. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It won't. It won't stand separately. He'll be like literally integrated. Like, like the texture is like part of his skin or something like that. Okay. Is it the second yeah. poster? Okay. So yeah, in both the po- in all the in all the posters, actually, we kind of added the effect in various degrees, depending on the what you call it backdrop or the setting is actually. Okay. Okay. And uh, are these? Mm-hmm. Uh, Pointers like discussed with the filmmakers, like, do you tell Vishwak that, hey, I've added this, let me know if it's good or not, or you leave some things for interpretation and f- let the client figure out whether it is there or not? I think the second thing you said, uh, I think it is that uh, I, uh, the textures, and I won't go into the technical details at all. Like, I added, I've added this, I won't go into the recipes of the uh, posters, like, these are the attributes. Just keep them. If they tell an effect is like I don't want this, then I have done a wrong job. If they don't tell anything, okay, everything is everything fell into places. If they like the poster and this, I just leave them, leave them to that. Only when I discuss uh, the design with the people like you or my friends or something, I'll tell them, okay, I've added this texture to it. If you can zoom in, you can see that. Right. So right. that is, uh, yeah, you can. Actually, there will there will be a little bit of chromatic aberration in my posters to just kind of. Integrate everything together, be like uh, okay. properly, uh, what do you call it, uh, merged or something like that. So that I do for all the pushes, but I especially started uh, that thing from this movie campaign actually, Dark Kadam. Okay. And the aspect ratio is literally it is in the size of an American dollar bill. Yes. So there was no no conscious decision like this has to be in this size. So we fitted that uh, money in that size. No, I found this really good uh, image of this money bill. Added some textures of rear and tear that it is like coming feeling off or something. Then added into the print, gave gave it depth through like adding shadows and stuff, and place the title. Actually, this was like uh, you know the money banknote kind of elevated the poster because it had all the negative spaces needed to place the text and the the song name and all the other details, the Pan Indian languages and Wishbook's name and production company names, everything. So it yeah it turned out really good actually. Rather than like, rather than expected. Actually, he had this bandage in his fingers and uh, in his cheek. 
first it was like i left it as a bandage but i thought okay everything is like in a golden money note thing why don't we just you know make make it into gold itself and i kind of use the same material as the text to the titan design to the bandages as well okay. yeah it kind of worked well got it got it and bro i'm just wondering what is your most used tool in photoshop uh is it those blending blending styles i'd say brush brush tool actually brush tool i use yeah i use brush tool to kind of mark out uh, because i don't use auto select obvious like you know only if the if the delivery is like you know uh only if i have a tight headline i use the uh, auto select otherwise i'd go and uh, you know when you zoom in and cut the object to brush you know you know the details what are the details there you know you, you just feel the object like you know you are selecting right when you are selecting actually this is where the magic happens for me when i am selecting only i just get an idea okay maybe we can treat that in this way or in this way because selecting an object through a brush takes a lot of time right so in that way in that time i kind of ideate or because before the poster comes when you discuss the idea to the director or the creator uh the image you have in your mind is very different but once the poster is once the image is arrived that you have to work on then uh, the whatever you have imagined won't uh, what do you call it come close to the output that you will be like getting out from this image right so that's when this masking out helps masking is a, and i use lut uh, color lookups and color lookups are the most used i think because so that will help me to kind of bring everything together and uh, gradient maps i use most gradient maps kind of you know depth uh, work on the depths and the uh, color grading and yeah i think these are the three tools i use most okay. brush tool is the one i select the first time when i open the canvas and type tool obviously i literally yes. like typography my poster okay. i always want my poster to be like you know sort of directed by the type of type uh, what do you call it type paste right so I really love this poster. I'm very proud of it. Actually, yeah. You must have a large collection of fonts by now, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, yeah. Most of them are demos. But like I told you, like uh, literally, a good font can make a poster really better. Mm-hmm. And also, a very bad font can make a very good poster to come to, you know, very poor level. So it's always, as uh, since we are talking about a movie poster, movie poster is come incomplete without. incomplete without like this typography the type of design or the credit and stuff like that a good typography can make a very good poster like in my opinion so in the next set of posters can you uh, again walk us through the uh, process of sunivu's campaign what was the campaign yeah. for uh, so what was the objective of this campaign and uh, for mm-hmm. that objective like how these posters helped got it okay so uh, again i got a call from ashit saying we need a poster for uh, sunivu release day like an out now poster okay so he told me he already had an idea actually when i was looking at the film i had this idea what if they made a movie poster out of a bank note or a money currency note or whatever mm-hmm. i had this idea on my head actually i wanted to create a fan art for this actually so when ashad reached out to me saying hey we are we have this idea for netflix uh, uh, sunivu release poster uh we want this to be made in a bank i said okay let's do it and uh, i gave, i presented him with this ideas of a uh, uh, bank note of ajit kumar so in the bottom you can see those three right so yeah so those are the ideas i gave priya and the top one also i gave them in a rough manner like you know uh, is image cut out or uh, texture applied roughly they liked that one really better because he was like having his gun like about to do something that really kind of excited excited them actually so they yes. wanted to do with that one so okay i kind of uh, again my illustrator then i kind of illustrated the cross hatch illustrator illustration of ajit and he kind of added him uh, to the bank note and yeah actually it came out really well actually i'm a huge big uh, huge fan of him actually so to work for us not to be officially you know uh, uh, collaborated with his movie but you know in in some form i was like you know able to collaborate with him and his movie was like a big thing big deal for me yeah actually i wanted to give the best poster for this so i literally went through the my new details actually you can see since 1971 it's his birthday date and there is ak61 mentioned there it's his 61st film and also you can zoom in and see ajit kumar secretary secretary of the treasury will be there so yeah, everything is like you know 
so the minor details actually yeah okay okay yeah yeah uh, wh- wh- where is the 61 thing uh in the left side actually yeah e ak61 uh, near the nogat oh, okay okay yeah, okay, yeah. okay yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> Insane. It's a little detail, but it is when you zoom in and see, you can see all these little stuff. It makes me happy. Yes, no. yes. So on top of the note as well, you added a lot of textures. Is it? Yeah, I had to blend the illustration to the background. Okay. Yeah, okay. actually, uh, it is a actually in the middle. I think uh, Benjamin Franklin would be there, or or Abraham Lincoln. I think I don't know. Uh, in the one dollar bill, I don't know the highest quality uh, from a website and. Uh, made the background empty by adding some cross hatching textures and uh, yeah and then again he did like a crazy job of illustrating um Mr. Rajit Kumar in like this cross hatch thing manner yeah this is like a really good i can't even believe i made this yeah something like that insane insane man i'm loving this aspect ratio by the way uh, the note aspect yeah. ratio yeah yes. actually uh, dumki the one actually i think i did this after or before them i don't know but uh, both posters are influenced by the size of the bank mm-hmm. so there was no idea actually no actually once we made this this uh, they really liked it and we had the problem of fitting it to the instagram ratio so we had to kind of uh, rectify something but yeah it was a really well made poster for my side actually i really like love working nice nice bro. really good design exercise So one more of my favorite films Skylab Telugu cinema hasn't really seen any film which deals with the uh, plot lines that are there in this one and that too yeah inspired from a real incident that most of our parents actually live uh, uh, live through yes. live this moment yes. let's start off with this very artistic poster uh, of like Nani as the chief guest Mm-hmm. Uh, how did this happen how did you arrive at the concept that okay let's go with an illustrative style only for this okay so first of all uh, the producer he actually is a very passionate producer so he really loves cinema actually. so mm-hmm. i haven't like he's the, like one of my uh, favorite persons i've worked so the skylab uh, what do you call it we have actually everything was done by vinshira Mr. Like Vincent has actually done like tremendous job of like doing the campaign. He did like very good posters. The one you see, they will be like sitting on a uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, a rocket. It's not a rocket. Actually, it's a satellite. Actually, satellite. Exactly. And yeah, uh, yeah. and uh, yeah, he does like unimaginative posters. Like nobody can imagine stuff like that. Then I arrived there and I was seeing what I could do more than that. Uh, so. okay maybe we can steer the direction of the campaign into a different direction to set the time period of the movie which is taking place so i gave the idea of uh, the producer to okay let's uh, make creatives out of match boxes calendars and uh, what do you call it paper pamphlets which are like evident in that period which was more prominent in that period but uh, we kind of didn't have proper timings and proper schedule to kind of make those things happen so when uh, when the producer tell uh, told me like uh, nani will be creating the even for the what do you call it release event okay i had this idea of uh, making a retro looking poster for then i stumbled upon this poster of sham singer i really like nani's like you know uh, his uh, his composition in that poster i i sent him the poster to the, to the producer and told him oh, okay let's make a comic book poster out of this and uh, have him like sit there like you know we'll make a proper comic book poster out of it and invite a uh, post it as an invite mm-hmm. and they really liked an idea and again i process it with my illustrator he did this magic and it really came out pretty nice because i i really love comics actually so uh why i like comics are it is like uh, both composition heavy and the typography heavy the so both things i really love so we you could always do something with like you know these things uh, and make the make the output really better so this came out really nice actually uh, there will be like release date and uh, there will be like production logo designed into the style of comic book uh, uh, flavor and oh. uh, there are like lot of little stuff there and here and there yeah. i'm just curious so these kind of textures so this is like a mm-hmm. used comic book uh, that's what i see here 
So how did you get that texture on uh, top of it? Where do you take those uh, elements from? Okay. Um, actually, uh, if you search the web like very deep, like for hours and hours and hours, you can find textures like these actually. And most of them are like uh, dark spaces that I don't want to reveal. Uh, I don't want to promote them, but yeah. These are like acquired through like hours and hours of searching deliberately to in mind that okay, I want this picture, where do I find them? So, yeah. yeah. So again, when I was started, I was using stock pictures, but they weren't doing the job for me. And I was looking for okay, what texture will make it more believable. Mm -hmm. That search led me to some spaces where I could download these textures for a very limited amount of time. Then it will like go away. So yeah, stuff like that. Okay. I think it yeah pays off very well all the time you spend uh, going through those. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because our job is to make the make the poster look believable, right? There is no point of making comic without those textures, right? Even it is it is a wittiest piece. It is drama. It is happening there. So hmm. we have to make this video. So yeah, uh, uh, rather than the poster making, I would. I would say I would spend a lot. Of, I would spend a lot of time finding textures and finding right fonts for the comic books and stuff like that. So okay. yeah, you you should always like you know you shouldn't settle on the first texture you get when you type for paper texture. So that's nice. Yes. The main and poster we did. So it took a lot of time, a lot of planning, and a lot of uh, what you call it color correction, adjustment, and stuff like that. It oh. literally took like three to four weeks. It looks simple, but mm. we had like a lot of ideas, a lot of discussions, and a lot of Iterations of the poster. Actually, this uh, this image was from a look test, I believe. It was oh. taken in a hotel with very poor lighting. We had to kind of, you know, uh, color correct it, in, lit up the brightness, uh, in, uh, increase the brightness in in a way that it is it 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 doesn't like you know a uh, beach or skin out or something. Mm. So yeah, it took a lot of time, but nobody talks about that. <laughs> Actually, I really love the poster. This is my favorite poster. Like no, one of the favorite poster ever. Okay, okay. There is this uh, satellite shooting down as well onto Earth. Like, yeah, yes. yeah, little, little we added. The next set of series uh, with Tamanna as the lead uh, and the series November Story. So, mm -hmm. this is slightly different in your line of work. This is primarily uh, photographs heavy or screen grabs heavy. So, can you talk about what was unique in this project with respect to? the art and the people that you work with okay so the director uh comes with them and he was like he was the first time director had been. so usually what happened uh, first what happened was we i kind of got into this uh wrong direction for the camera and for the okay right so then i took a step back and had a deep conversation with him then i sort of uh wanted to do some uh, the process in Different way, and uh, unfortunately, we don't we didn't have the luxury to do do a photo shoot with Tamanna or uh, any sort of photo shoot. All we had was set images that taken during the time of the shooting. If you can see, the first two posters are like it's they're like uh, shot during the scene is playing out. And the third image is right, you know, actually the image is where she's waiting for her makeup. Okay. It had nothing to do with the film. Okay. But I really like the composition. So it, uh, the, the windows were, uh, were actually, we, I cut it out and uh, made it into a negative space where the light is coming from under this flare. I really, I really love it. But obvious, for obvious reason, her face is not visible. They can't do this. So I kept it aside for me. So yeah, actually, this movie, all I, for this movie, I had to work with the screen grabs. Like, you know, there are like only, a limited set of good photographs that I can use, right? And again, we didn't have the what you call it, luxury of doing a photo shoot with Tamanna. So uh, this is like a crisis management uh, project. So I had to do with whatever the best thing I got from the things that were provided from me. And the director has been like very understanding and very helpful. Uh, and I was very afraid to kind of, it was like a it's my first Tamil project. And I showed in with a lot of fear because the poses are very simple um, because the, at the time the movies were coming out were like Karnan and those films are like 
had like really beautiful uh, posters and really like detailed posters but all my for all i gave him was like very simple uh, color corrected and what you call it manipulated in some small way and just typo heavy poster and when i gave it to him i told him like uh, you know you, if you can change the photo like sorry uh, if you are not happy with my work please feel free to kind of you know change the design but I, i'm not thinking i am giving you the best and he told me for my film it is enough so that was like uh, a huge support for me actually you know and yeah we worked unfortunately uh what do you call it the, the hoster site they had like their own designer and they went with their campaign but these posters are very close to me so this are this is where the journey started looking back when i was upright to kind of present this poster now i feel very stupid because i really love the way it turned out actually so yeah so yeah i really love it and the what resolution uh, pictures did you have in in the set set images that you worked on yeah those are like really really high quality i can't like complain about it those are really high quality but you see uh, like i told you a very good image can make a very good poster right mm-hmm. apparently out of 100 10 were very good photos right? right in those 10 only three or four where i can see the face of samana okay. in all those other still she is like uh, facing the window but they are very beautiful very beautiful mm-hmm. actually like in the th- the the third poster you were showing now right so she is just waiting for her makeup to be applied but the image was very good and the lighting was very good yeah we made that into this sort of poster interesting and i kind of traveled into some directions where i kind of complicated like applying a paint over or you know but the director was into it uh, he was like what are you doing this is not my film <laughs> uh my film doesn't have this sort of history just stick to what you do best now okay yeah. oh. so in the same direction of playing with live uh, or like just real images mm-hmm. uh, this short film also is very interesting that you worked on uh, so like what was this process like uh, why was this uh, design choice taken that some emotion through real images should be uh, captured which is primary and rest of it is secondary so how did you make that design minimal what were your choices overall in this okay so the second one right so that was two different uh, screenshots okay a screen grab from the movie so we kind of merged it together um i felt you know, that whenever one, or... yeah yeah that oh okay no no that this is like two different uh, images spliced together okay so i found these images were like really interesting two different images like but when you combine it they gave this feeling of it is a singular image right so then i told the director to kind of you know let's not play anything extra with it let's, let's just go with it it's really working and really clicking really uh, what you call it conveying the uh, message of the film or you know idea of the uh, short short picture right so yeah we went with it and for the second uh, poster uh, again the same idea but in a different way this double exposure right. like the idea of the film is this guy is like you know uh, left over a senior woman like a woman older than him like he's kind of you know following her and peeking her and he's like he kind of desires or something like that so mm. that uh, idea gave a birth to this uh, sort of like uh, in this direction and also uh, we didn't have photoshoot images as well. like even uh, what do you call it set images all we had was this green grass and initially i explored a different sort of a way but it was very complicated and wasn't like you know uh, telling anything so we stick with it we stuck with it uh, with this layout and composition interesting and you added some additional noise uh, factor also in this right yeah yeah it was a low res low res image actually to kind of what you call it combat it and to integrate the double exposure proper, properly uh, there was some grain added okay. so okay. so okay. Uh, just a random question right now okay. uh, per month how many posters uh, or projects are you working on currently okay i think currently i'm occupied with like i think three to four movies in a varying oh. scales and varying stages and uh, and i'm working with uh, i'm working with what you call it uh, 
a design team who works for netflix to kind of give them some what you call it a graphic uh, design stuff very abstract okay and there are three songs you know that i'm like currently undertaking so yeah, okay. because that it. yeah yeah again the only problem i'm facing is you know meeting deadlines <laughs> i'm not good at i think this from this point on like i think probably the people who kind of gave me project and still waiting for the poster might see this and yeah to them i think okay i'll give you a poster yeah 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 and actually uh, that's a good segue to get into uh, how your process has evolved as an artist like mm-hmm. from college designing for fun to now uh, accountability will be higher stakes will be higher money will yeah. be hard deadlines so mm-hmm. what process changes did you make uh, in yourself in the way you work you mostly work remotely mm-hmm. so how yes. do you manage your work how how was how's that transition okay so at first i thought okay let's schedule everything let's have this google calendar opened up and properly place everything okay this time i'm doing this project this time i'm doing this project okay but what will happen is when when you're working on a good poster you tend to forget time and everything. i do it like that because okay i start a poster by 10 o'clock if it is not working i know okay i'll let's just keep it aside and work on next day when a very good poster is shaping up okay if i start at 10 until 5 o'clock i won't even stand you know i i won't even go away i'll just you know work 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 it it will just hold me together okay that's the main problem mm-hmm. okay i can't fix fix the schedule okay so that when i realize okay let's have a set of process to everything okay so this is the time i wake up this is the time i start work this is the time i end work this is the time i review what are the deadlines i have so that i won't miss deadlines which will you will know ruin my career so that that i'm conscious on right now which i've been like following for two months i'm not very successful at it but it's okay it's taking me uh it kind of show me some development also uh, one more thing i have is uh i usually work home right so i usually wear a t-shirt or something and i sit casually and work and that gave me a sense of very casual approach to my work mm-hmm. like i'm doing this for fun stuff right so then i realized okay let's okay let's just wake up at a very proper time dress up nice sit at your work do your work as a proper professional do then actually that really brought a very good change in my uh, process and the way i handle things the way i meet my deadlines so yeah that's the that's the, i think the major decision i took actually uh, many people would suggest that if you are multitasking uh, write it down and properly meet them and uh, do stuff like that but that doesn't work for me i tried it like n number of times but i think sticking to a proper process will help you a lot rather than sticking to a schedule so schedule might change according to the need or something like that if you if a sudden deadline comes up okay someone a uh, big star calls me and okay barney we have this project we need to solve it by today night i couldn't say no at this stage of my career right so um, i i can say i say to him like okay bro sorry i have my schedule fixed uh, today night i'm delivering this song poster i can't do your project it can't be like that also uh, you have to be kind of you know negotiable with others as well because i i have to develop this sense of what do you call it uh, um a uh, easiness you know okay mm-hmm. you can be easily approached communicating with if you is very easy and you are open to ideas okay at first i was like this strict uh, wall, what do you call it a stern wall like whatever idea i fix that's the poster i would give that mm-hmm. had led me to a lot of problems you know and uh, then i came to the realization that my job is to kind of make uh, the director's idea to come to a form mm-hmm. i have no other job than that. my only additional uh, what do you call it uh, additional job is to kind of make that look more beautiful right and help the director to realize that uh, picture what he has in me. i have no other job than that okay i don't have to be a big uh, what do you call it big head and uh, say that my i have very enlightened sense of design that is the only thing i will provide this is that that's the mentality i had before so i came out of it and yeah life is very easy now so i don't have to if i give up poster the director likes it okay easy that's it i go to the next work if she doesn't like it i'll ask him what you don't like the elements or you don't like the poster at all 
uh if they say they, okay no bro the posture is not working for me i try to ask them okay what we can add to improve or to kind of make it better to work for you if they say no even literally everything is wrong i just you know dump it and start working fresh okay. so but before i don't have that if they say no i just you know uh, what do you call it i'll and be very what you call it how can you say no to my post or something right, like that right. i was very what do you call it i had this huge uh, uh, designer ego if you can name it in that way yes. i had that but now i don't now i don't i i'm very open because you see um, you sit in a room and design you don't know the outside world. Right. they know they know how a poster might impact an audience they know which poster works in which place this it is very better that you can listen to them and learn from them so that you can apply that to the next project as because if you are not learned from a very good set of people that you work with you can you can you can't learn any you can't learn anything in your life right so that thing was a huge change over for me and fortunately i have worked with a really good people very talented and very kind so yes. yeah this career is a really good blessing for me so that's why to honor this like you know to not take it as a very casual and uh, having fun sort of a thing to kind of make it more professional and following these things like you know having this set wake up time and sleep time uh, i have a set wake up time i don't have a set sleep time. if if mm. there is a requirement hey, i have no issue with like you know doing an all night right. uh, also i don't go overboard as well mm. i take care of myself so that i can work as long as i can mm. and the other thing is like wearing proper clothes not t-shirt mm-hmm. i'm not wearing proper clothes right now but i don't want to wear t-shirt when i'm working so that's some yeah. quality thing because i don't feel like working i'll just you know uh, go behind and drop and sleep that's it uh, yes. that's a very very bad thing to happen in a day so i'm very conscious about these decisions i made and these, these are like helping me out real lot the next thing i want to know is so as a designer this is what i'm trying to learn nowadays to improve my skill which is i'm trying to decode the taste of people okay these are the mm-hmm. common patterns etc and these tastes okay. come from people's experiences their inspirations some things that uh, just stick for them that make sense for them they probably can't tell it out or talk right about it but it's just how <laughs> the brain works and how things got conditioned uh in that zone i just want to know where do you draw your general inspiration from be it uh design specific or just artistic inspiration uh, that okay this is the excellence that uh, i want to reach some point yeah anything yeah, that's that that's, a, that's, a, that's a real good question actually actually my inspirations are like you know uh i tend to be a fan of a person who's like who's this height of his career like that is that is only him at the top so i don't know it is conscious or unconscious i so i like rashnika and, and i like ilera jab very much uh, these are the two persons i always go back to when i kind of you know feel down or something so the only reason is they are not at the top right they are also reinventing themselves they are also they have this like sheer uh, forget rashnika take ilera ja he has this like the sheer skill to sheer work ethic Uh, this year with that he was able to dominate the industry and take rajnika i'm a very very big fan of him even my design journey started with it like doing the fan art of his old movies like billa uh, priya something like that i'm a very very big fan of him so seeing them like you know uh, take for example rajnika and he doesn't bring the work to his home mm. right he works work his like is separating uh, you can separate rajnikanth is like into film rajnikanth the rajnikanth is seen movies and rajnikanth we see in real life they are very different right actually you can insp- you can get insp- inspiration from both of them and again um, ilaraja the be he the is creative process is genius the be he kind of makes you actually yeah the, the only the true meaning of art is to kind of in more feelings in you impart feelings in you to make you feel something right to make you re- make you relate to it in some sort of a way so they are like my ultimate inspiration and t- coming to my career i have uh, here we have uh, uni john uh, gopi prasanna vinchira kabilan they are like amazing designer and 
I really like Raj Khatri's work. And they are like very, very good at what they do. You can't even name like a single band poster from them. And, uh, you know, uh, when you're doing fan art, right, you have an ultimate liberation. Like you can do whatever you want. When you come to design film, officially you are, when you are designing for a film, that's when the reality is set in. Set in. Like you have a lot of in- instructions from the production side, from the direction side. Lim- there are a lot of limitations, right? You can't go experimental on that. You can't mm-hmm. go experimental on a big star film, right? So that's why the design of Beast from Gopi Prasanna is look very different from uh, what he did for, uh, what you call it, modern or Chennai. Those, okay. are, those are like extreme ends, right? If you creatively liberate someone, okay, do whatever you want. They will do their best. But when it comes to a constraint, like, okay, naming, designing for a big star like Vijay, it has its like own limitation. It is a blessing as well as a, you know, curse as well. So you can't, what do you call it, bring your entire, okay, I'm a, that's why I don't criticize designers at all because only they know what they are going through. Uh, okay. if, if a big designer gives out a very average looking poster, you know, the production has like had its own, uh, influence in it so that like it came out this way so uh, i really like their body as well so can you also talk about how ilera just music plays an important part in your design process as well yeah actually i listen to his music when i work so it's pretty much woven into it cool, cool. and also some in some ways music kind of like what do you call it improves my art with that 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 i feel in in some instances that that i felt for example, whenever I design for uh, the podcast Instagram page, it's always Ilayaraja that I listen to. Uh, I, I'm not like, you know, saying other composers are inferior or superior, but for my, personally, I really love Ilayaraja. So when I work something which I want to like open my heart and like give the best, I will just listen to his music and just let him do my <laughs> job through my hand. Yeah, nice. Like that. That's a nice way to put it. And uh, so in that direction, uh, what kind of content do you kind of consume uh, apart from movies? Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. So, all right. So this might be weird, but I have two monitors, right? So in one of the monitor, I would play those very old movies, like what you call it, the movies I really liked when I was growing up. Um, mm-hmm. I think you might not probably familiar with them, but okay, Padepa. Arnachalam, uh, yes. Gilly, uh, mm. Dina, Talapati, uh, Nayakan, all these sort of old movies. And also a lot of Vijayakan movies. I really love Vijayakan. And uh, there is a movie called Samsara Muruvim Saram in Tamil. A feel good movie. I watch that. Like it will be playing on the secondary screen. I'll be working, doing work. I'll just, you know, uh, that would like keep me going. If there is a very big work that I have to kind of pause on, I just play a movie. And just work on it, like listening to it or just looking at it at some. Okay, when I was like working nonstop, I take my, you know, take some rest at, like, by looking at the movie or something like that. And also I listen to some interviews, uh, creative process of other legends, like, you know, like Santos Narayan. And I, I really like it, the way he gives an interview. So that one and uh, yeah, mostly about the creative process of doing, not only related to film, a creative process of designing a table or uh, designing a car, whatever okay. that involves a process, a set process from beginning to when I watch that, when, I, when I'm working or when I don't have an inspiration to work, I watch that. And by the end of the video, I think I would just open Photoshop and start, okay, what is the work? <laughs> Something like that. Okay. okay. So this is like, okay, so 80% it will be music. Uh, the remaining 20% will be the stuff that I watch. <laughs> okay. Okay. So 80%. In that 80%, 90% will be the other. The 10 will be the other. No, okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm um, not kidding, guys. That's for you. <laughs> a philosophical question. Uh, okay. Probably not that philosophical, but what is that thing that you exactly like in the work that you're doing? Uh, let's say like what? 90% of the work that you do is something that you decently enjoy but one thing really stands out that is the thing that uh, you you are in design and you work for it again and again what would that be yeah, actually uh, see uh, to be honest I love doing fan artworks than movie posters mm. that's an honest answer 
So that thing I would love to do again and again, like you ask, like, see, um, to, okay. So there is this movie which came out in 1980s. Take for an example. Now at present 2023, you design a poster for it, a fan art board, and you post it on social media. A person who watched that movie in 1980s comes to you in a comment and says that, okay, this movie made me to read, like, you know, go back to the memory where I watched this movie with my father. and they just wanted to share with you so that is like a blessing you know and right. that's what i strive for and everyone in my team like i work with strive for you know to uh, see um okay there is also a commercial perspective to this work right that is equally important part but majorly you want to kind of tell that story by telling a story i mean you have to invoke a feeling in your what whom over like looks at it. in film poster that is like 50% positive 30% positive in some rare instances i 100% is possible but in paracaset work it is i think 100% possible it is a, a meter of achievement that i made like in some poster i think i can say honestly i made a very good work hmm. by like you know by making that poster in some cases i can say okay it would have been better it would have been more researched and more properly ideated See, I think that's the one thing I would want to do it repeatedly, like doing fan art. Actually, I have this idea of making uh, this comic book for a uh, for this uh, material called Pony and Silver, the movie which came out recently. Actually, it's like a very good book. I have read it like like five to six times because that's like very good book to read. Uh, so I want to make it as a comic, and there are a lot of ideas here and there regarding for the character. So actually, that is the thing which kind of keeps me going. So right now we have very small team, like three to four people. But once when I get to the financial stage of like I can like hire literally hire people to kind of work on this, like create this sort of a uh, movement, right? Actually, I was very much inspired by this person called Raja Ravi Verma, who lived in like late 18th century. Uh, he made he introduced Renaissance, like you know, uh, realism in India. I think. So what happened was before him, only the rich could afford the paintings of gods and goddesses. like you know a proper painting only the rich could afford like they can place that in our in their home after he came his paintings were mass produced so that like everyone can have a well painted image in their home like that is not in, exactly like painted by him but they can have a painting in that in their home right so i want to do something like that like only hollywood only the people in the western world can produce uh, fan art in that quality that doesn't like stick well with me like we can also do it with proper skill set and proper like you know team of people yeah that is what i kind of you know try to work for that i can that i will surely do because i'm not good with good with illustration but with god's blessing i think i got dinakar so he's like very talented i, I can't write properly and varun came into piece so i properly piece together i think we will create something more you know Uh, more cool stuff down the line. We we got really crazy ideas for our page. So yeah, yeah, we will post that in a while because we kind of we are all busy with our own work. So once we kind of fix everything, I think we will have something really crazy going on in our Instagram. Look out for it. Yeah, that I'm looking forward for. So uh, coming to the final segment. Uh, yeah. So for the. the especially in my audience since i am a product designer and most of my videos on my channel are like product design youtube videos most of the people are either exploring design tools like photoshop illustrator and other things like figma or they're just okay. building sense or they're already full time designers who only work in the tech space but okay with this design knowledge with this tool knowledge uh and with no uh portfolio in film so far how can someone so this is uh let's say one kind of uh people were talking about another kind of people who are literally interested in film posters as a, a career or that's something they would want to explore so okay. for you since you also entered this uh, scene like fairly recently what consider what is considered considered as good portfolio how can someone improve their skill and thinking to get into the space of where they can get opportunities people uh, their work is good enough that people will reach out to them so okay. any tips uh, for people in these zones okay 
for me i think it's uh, maintaining a good portfolio properly categorizing everything and also having a diversity of work that you do like like let's not like stick to one set of uh, design thing so if you have a themed page like i do we do for a cafe okay so only uh, deal in like retro and vintage that's that's an option so that's why i don't have an instagram profile i only have my page as an instagram profile i don't like have any personal instagram page, right so what it was uh okay i i kept for a cafe as the entire like no whatever i do for whatever i love to do uh, that will be there and my professional works like i uh, the ones i did professionally as a movie Publicity designer that will be on my behalf for them. So that will be kind of uh, that will be uh, problem solving for most because uh, behalf. Okay, if uh, someone calls and asks you for your portfolio, you don't want to send them like separate images or a PDF document or something. Yeah, It right. is better if you can send them in a singular link, but also you have to filter that properly so that like they see what you want them to see so that they can like pick you up, right? right. So when when they used to ask me for a portfolio what i do is i'll send them two links one is first i'll send them my behalf portfolio second is the instagram profile because they are coming me for a movie portfolio if i send them for a cassette before they will be amazed because there are like lot of good artworks there but it is it is like constrained to a singular theme right, right? vintage and retro so i have this behalf portfolio where i kind of you know uh, curate all my uh, works so in behalf i don't post for a cassette because for a cassette is completely restrained like constrained to the social media space so that's how i separate and segregate and having a diverse body of work will also help because you know uh, people will always find easier to hire you when they see something you have that they want you know mm. that's a very simple idea right so uh, if you only uh, do some really uh, what you call it uh, class work that won't work because if they come Come and see. Okay, something very they want come something very commercial. They can't get it from you. They would if even if you are skilled, you you are not communicating them. Good, right? So having a diverse body of work and displayed it properly that that is I think that is solve like eighty percent of the problem. Right, right. Cool, bro. Uh, thanks a lot for your time overall. This was very insightful. Me as a designer and a film enthusiast. uh talking okay. about names like vishwak sen gautam vasudev meenan uh and your interactions with them like for me it is just uh music to my ears all of this and thank i you, hope people listening uh, as well will find value in this really really uh, love your posters love your work i'm waiting for more of those exciting projects about ps1 comics that you're talking about and uh, uh, sure, sure. looking out for the nani's rest of the campaign series as well Thanks yeah. a lot for your time again. Thank you so much. Thank you.